King Israel siege. The Free Gaza movement was two weeks behind schedule and still with untold hurdles to negotiate. When the boats finally left the port of Larnaca, their flags fluttered in victory as they headed for Gaza in an attempt to make history. The Israeli Defense Force have an unspoken policy of deterring global activists from participating in the Palestinian resistance movement by killing or injuring them. Uri, what are our chances of getting to Gaza? My uh, reading of the uh, inner dynamics of Israeli governments in general and this government in particular is that in terms of moral barrier, moral scruples, there are next to none. Participants should not assume that they will be allowed to reach Gaza. Someone who set off for Gaza on one of the first boats to break the siege was filmmaker Aki Nawaz. Obviously, Aki, your uh, mission was successful, but you had an encounter with the Israeli uh, military, I understand. Well, we were, um, we actually broke the siege. It was the first time when Yvonne was on the ships, and it was just. Um, they were circling the, uh, our boats and everything, and it was very, you know, people need to know it's extremely scary on the sea. Uh, when you're on, on land, you can run away, you can go here, do this, you know, but on sea it's so scary. And what really shocked me about, you know, and I think that when Israel talks about uh, the, the, the campaigners or whatever, the activists were provocative, you know, they were on sea. How can they be provocative? It was the Israelis who were provocative. And, it, and uh, you know, I recall the night before we got into Gaza, just, you know, it's just this sea and it's just black and it's so dark and it's any minute, you you know, the Israelis were actually threatening us as well, the military, that we're going to board, we're going to, you know, and I think that the... What about the advanced weaponry the Israeli military accused uh, the think, humanitarian aid people well, of what, having? What, what, Iron bars, what, what, knives, what, what, did you have them when you were on board? Well, I mean, what, you know, I, I saw the pictures of, of the weaponry and it, it, it's, it's comical, it's a comedy. When you're on a ship you need knives, you need like different tools for them ships and everything. And I think that, you know, uh, again this is the Israeli spin and we need to know how to break this spin because how dare this state talk about arms? How dare they, where do they get the audacity to talk about, talk about arms when they are tooled up or they have the most sophisticated arms in that region? And they stop it, and, and they always talk about well, we were provoked or we were attacked. People are quite frightened to attack the IDF or the Israelis. I was going to say, if I can just take you back, because I was on the same boat as uh, you, Aki, and we knew that there were three Israeli warships around us from the radar, and then suddenly the communications went down, satellites went down, our mobile phones stopped working, and all signals to the ship had been jammed. Presumably this would have happened uh, with the flotilla and it is a very frightening experience. Well, well uh, this is precisely what, what they did to us and it does get very scary again. And, and if you, uh, you analyse what the Israelis did, they did it so far out at sea that nobody could get in contact with anybody and, and, and thank God there were some cameras still rolling and I'm sure that when the activists get back here and the, and, and the film stock starts coming out, we're going to see a lot more to this story. Well, you're a story. documentary filmmaker yourself. What did yeah. you think of the media representations of what happened in the immediate aftermath? I'm, I'm really surprised that the media is not challenging the Israeli spokesmen, you know, who come on and put, uh, put forward this really cool and calm uh, attitude towards this. They, they murdered. They slaughtered these people. These people on these ships, you, you know, who are sometimes very annoying because they are so peaceful and so passive, you know, and I, I'm more of an active person. I'm saying, you know, we, ha we have to do something, but these people are really well conscious people. They, they care about suffering. And Well, and the Zionist commentator, Melanie Phillips, said that the Israeli soldiers who boarded the ships were acting in self-defense. How? Uh, it's just, you know, it's beyond belief, the spin that all these people, it's not just Melanie Phillips and all these people, they, you know, it's very intimidating. Mark uh, Regev said they had paintballs and, and weren't intending to use well, live rounds. Well, you, you know, we know that after every incident that happens in that area, the Israelis come out with a spin. It's not just Zionists, it's just the Jews and the, and the Israelis. They're all, you know, they're all a part of this spin. But not and all Jews, because we've had the Naturi Carter rabbis, 
on the demonstrations, a lot well, of Yvonne, Jewish had, peace movements within. Well, lots of Jewish people were on the No, well, well, we had lots of Jewish people with us, Hedy Epstein and things like this. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying that, you know, we ought to stop kind of uh, uh, over rinsing this Zionist thing because I think that there's a, you know, the majority of people are behind their government in that land. And Israel has absolutely no right to dictate any terms. Thank whatsoever. you very much, Aki, for coming on board. Yeah, thanks, Saki. Uh, well, uh, as we already heard, you were uh, on a boat that tried to, uh, well, it successfully broke the blockade, mm. but you also made another visit to break it. Yes, uh, I went on George Galloway's Viva Palestina convoy, and uh, obviously no Israelis en route. We went across North Africa, but uh, we did encounter some violence from the police in Al Arish um, near the Sinai Desert. And, and there was a clash with the Egyptian police? Yes, uh, in fact I'll tell you who was with me, Hassan al Banagani, who was arrested on board uh, the flotilla just the other day, you know, with the, uh, the press TV cameraman. Well, our uh, next guest is uh, no stranger to Sinai. Um, she uh, dropped by London to uh, talk about her journalism. Uh, watch this. Gail, you've probably got one of the best jobs in the world as far as anyone who likes travel is concerned. You've just come back from Sinai. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Because everyone's impression is Gaza, smuggling, uh, that area around Egypt. Well, Sinai is, has always been a crossroads between east and west, north and south. Um, it's a buffer zone. It's always been treated as such. It's a peninsula that is partly in Asia, partly in Africa. It now is under the um, jurisdiction of Egypt, but only recently, um, and